All he's thinking, guys, I got to get now top 12 in the chase for the championship. And again, like I said earlier in the show, he's just hoping Kurt Busch has a problem. Alan, you got more on the eight? Well, you know, we're seeing Dale Jr. ride the bottom lane after the team talked about how much they worked in the top lane and that that's where Jr. was going to run all night. So I just climbed up on the pit box and said to Cruci, Tony Erie Jr., why is he running the bottom? He laughed, he shrugged his shoulders, said, I don't know, but it's working. Well, one way to look at that, it's the fastest way around the racetrack, the shortest distance around the track, and if he can make it work down there, hey, why not do it? There goes the 24 car of Jeff Gordon by the 42 of Montoya. That's for position. That's for fourth spot. By the way, Gordon again started back in 18th position and has now come all the way to fourth in the first 63 laps. You have to wonder just how long that these leaders are going to be patient with these lap cars. As long as they've been hung in behind them, it's not going to be long before they start using that front bumper. And one big difference we saw, Andy, is that the front bumper on the car tomorrow matches up perfectly with the rear bumper on the other car. So before, you used to drive up underneath and hit him, and it would lift the back of the car up. Now it's just like a direct blow. The car just shoots forward. I think we're getting ready to see just how good it works. Yeah, you would have loved that, I'm sure, Rusty, because you didn't bump anybody at Bristol during your nine victories. Oh, trust me. I got the bump and run put on me, Jerry, a couple times, which lost me a couple of victories, that's for sure. And every now and then, I feel like I owe that 20 cool four car for doing that to me. But... Leaders are being held up. Now, take a look at our sprint speed lap, and we're going to show you what's happening with the leaders up there by, by lap traffic holding them up and actually slowing them down. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s last lap, 111 points. Look, at he's almost three miles an hour faster than the leaders because the leaders are stuck behind the lap cars. Now, they're finally trying to get by Paul Menard in the 15 and Jeff Green in the 66. Yeah, and Paul Menard's not going to have none of that, though. He doesn't want to go a lap down, and right now, He's doing a pretty good job, but it looks like he just got put a lap down by Casey Kane, and now he's just got to hold on and go for the lucky dog. Dale Earnhardt Jr. knows the pressure is on. He's 163 points out of 12th. He's got three races to get there. He has not finished out of the top 11 here in Bristol, Tennessee in the last four events. He needs a top 10 or better here tonight. And folks, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon are coming. They're fourth and fifth after 68 laps. We welcome you back to Bristol, Tennessee. NASCAR Nextel Cup Series action presented by Pennzoil. 78 of 500 laps complete and uh, congestion all around this racetrack, but the eight car is on the move and trying to pick off the 12 car of Ryan Newman for that would be for second position. Guys, the eight car's got a solid car. At every single lap, it seems like he's the fastest car on the racetrack. And again, he's got to get it done tonight. This is very important for him. He can't be driving easy. He's got to hammer down and get all he can get because he's running out of time to make that chase. He's now in this mix here. You see Ryan Newman in the 12 car. He's been working underneath Paul Menard in this 15 car for I don't know how many laps now, 15 or 20 laps. I'm not sure that, uh, you know, that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be able to get clear of these guys, even though his car is faster. I don't know if I've ever seen a race here at Bristol run this long early in the event with no problems whatsoever. I was getting ready to say, I don't think I've ever seen us go 81 laps without someone running in or running over someone or someone getting out and throwing something at someone. It's, this is not typical Bristol, but great two and three wide racing allowing you to pass in heavy traffic. You know, it's a first for everything, Jerry, and this is the first time these cars have been on this racetrack at night. They've all done all their practice and qualifying and practice, but never have they been under night conditions, so they don't know what their cars are going to handle light yet. Battle for fourth position. Carl Edwards trying to go back around the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Speaking of the 24, Dave. And, Doc, it is a little confusing to the drivers right now, too, with all this lap traffic and all this green flag racing. In fact, Jeff Gordon radioed in a few laps ago, hey, who am I racing? Now, he knows he's racing the 99, but earlier he was locked in a battle in traffic, and it was hard to tell what cars were the left because there were some really good cars already a lap down. You know, these long runs got to be getting hard on the drivers, too, because, you know, the longer you run, the driver starts wearing out. And you saw earlier in our countdown show, these drivers are pulling about three and a half G's out there. So if they stay running without a break, it's going to be wearing some drivers out. Yeah, I think you're going to see that as the race wears on. If it keeps having these long green runs, these guys are real. Their tongues are going to be hanging out pretty good. 
Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42 car who faded after starting second, faded to about 10th position, has now been able to climb back up. And uh, Wo gets back in, just bobbles a little bit, trying to, to get the car Wo down, not running to the back of the 99, but he's back all the way up to sixth spot. Well, that 99 car did a good job holding on to that thing just then. He about lost it at the start finish line. It was sliding all over. You know, I'm starting to see a lot of drivers now losing grip and starting at the bottom and going clear to the top. Earlier, we saw Tony Stewart get loose, and now the 99, Carl Edwards. So I believe his tires are starting to get wore out. Let's take a look at his replay at Carl Edwards. See what happened to him just a little while ago. He's coming off a of turn four. Juan Pablo gets right in his right rear quarter panel, gets him fishtailing back and forth going into turn one and he, he gathers it back up. The one car of Martin Truex is uh, right now being shown in seventh position. He has a lot to be concerned about over these next three races. Mike? And that's right, Doc, because they're pretty much on the bubble 11th in the standings, but I spoke with Kevin Mannion this morning, and he said the last thing they need to do is be conservative. He said they need to go for the wins, and if they didn't, that's when they get themselves in trouble. As for starting 25th today, he was not concerned at all, and I'll tell you why. He said he did a little bit of spying this afternoon. He looked at some of the competitors he had to beat on the racetrack and thought that some of his competition was just using too much rear spring. As he assessed his competition, he felt like some of the guys starting in front of them would be a little bit loose and they would be easy pickings. Maybe that's the case. He's moved from 25th all the way up to 7th. What do you think, Andy? How much spying did you do on the competitors during race weekend? Mike, I did a lot of that. I would walk around and look at these guys' cars, and you can tell a lot by just looking at the springs. You can tell if they're stiff or, or soft just by the diameter of the wire. See these guys racing right here. And this one car, his car is working really good on the bottom of the racetrack. But look here, coming in the picture, Kurt Busch in this two car. This is a guy that's been on fire the last few weeks, and he knows a few things about this track. Well, right now he's in the 10th position, and he's staying real patient. He knows he's got a pretty good lead when it comes to the points. He's got 163 points on Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming into this event, so he can afford to drive a little cautious. Now, Dale Jr. can't afford that at all. Kurt Busch broke a 52 race winless streak back at Pocono, and then he won uh, two weeks later, so he's won two of the last three. Solidly in 12th position, trying to get his sixth win. He is a five-time winner here at Bristol, Tennessee, although last year in the August race, he had an abysmal night and came home in 37th position. The chase of Casey King continues at lap 94. Back at Bristol, Tennessee, laps continuing to click away. We amazingly are caution free. Now, probably I'm going to regret I said that. We have gone 104 laps without a single caution flag. Very atypical for what is usually a Saturday night slugfest here on the high banks at Bristol. Now, moments ago, we nearly got some trouble because J.J. Yaley was trying to stay in front of a couple of cars, including this car, the AT&T Chevrolet of Jeff Burton. Take a look. And, boy, this is not where you want to be three wide. He got in the right rear of Burton, and then Dale Jarrett. Everybody slides back and forth. No harm, no foul. Everybody's okay, but probably took everybody's breath on that one. That was a close call right there. You know, one thing I'm seeing right now, guys, everybody in the racetrack looks really loose to me. And last night in our Butch race, the same thing happened. Hardly anybody got tight. And Brad, I'm just noticing all these loose cars. Yeah, you know what, Rusty? Uh, uh, Andy and I spent a lot of time with Rick Campbell yesterday, who's team leader for NASCAR product development with Goodyear. And we talked about these tires and how hard the right side tires are. But what happened is the cup race, the cup test got rained out. So the Bush and Truck guys got a lot of practice on these tires. So these are the tires that the Bush and Truck uh, guys use. And it's a very hard, conservative tire. And there's been a little bit of complaints about that. We want to mention the 31 car does not have sponsor logos on it because this past week the U.S. 11th Circuit Court of Appeals overturned the injunction that had been placed that had allowed the AT&T logo on the car. And that uh, now being overturned means that that logo has to disappear from the car. It was not grandfathered in. NASCAR has approved the paint schemes that they were bringing to the racetrack. And so Richard Childers Racing opted to bring this scheme with no logos on it to the racetrack here tonight. Alan? 
And Doc, let's talk about the 31 car on the racetrack now. We saw him moving up early in the race. Now we see him slipping back with a loose condition, no rear grip on the car. Something else new about this racetrack. This is the longest any of these drivers have ever run in consecutive laps. Most of the time when they practice, they put 10, 15, maybe the most 25 laps on a set of tires before they come in and try something else. Now they've run 100 laps on this configuration of racetrack for the first time. And some of them will find out they don't like the way their car handles over that long period of time. Back toward the front, the one car beginning to move. We saw him move late last week at Michigan to, to put up, pull off a great second place finish. And Martin Truex once again now closing in on the 24 car for third position. Here's our battle for the lead with Casey Kane. And tell you, Casey Kane and Newman, they've been going back and forth lap after lap. And Newman almost got Kane in the left for a quarter point on that last lap and almost got him sideways. You see, he took a shot down into turn one and wisely got out of the throttle and let him breathe a little bit. They've both been real patient with each other around these lap cars. And when they get a little bit open track, it looks like they're trying to just see what, they, what each other has. It's sort of deja vu a little bit. Last night in the NASCAR Bush Series race, the 9 and 12 were got together in the final couple laps and it ended up that uh, Ryan Newman ended up cutting a tire. He was the leader and trying to, Kane was trying to get past. Looks like a rematch right here. You know, going back to what Brad Daugherty said a little while ago about these tires, you know, I got to believe that after this race is over, Goodyear will come back and soften these tires up. They a little more conservative than they probably ought to be. And take a look at Kurt Busch working the outside of the old one car. He's already moved by the 99 of Carl Edwards. See that 11 car coming into the picture here too, Denny Hamlin. What about the 43 car of Bobby Labonte who started way back in the pack driving for the King Richard Petty started 22nd and Bobby has driven this car through traffic all the way up to seventh position. And Jerry, this is Bobby Labonte's style of race. He's being patient and that's what you need right here is patience. Brad, you got to believe that these guys are thinking about patience. Oh, absolutely, Rusty. And to go back to your point, Rick Campbell's telling me these Goodyear tires, they're looking at this as almost a big test tonight to figure out what they need to bring back. So I'm sure when they come back next time, we'll see a little stickier tire on that right side, be a little bit better racing. But right now, this isn't too bad. No, they got good racing going on right now, but hey, you know what, Brad? We're not in the driver's seat, and I know they're sliding all over the place, and they're hoping for cautions because, Andy, uh, you're calculating right now. How much farther do you think these guys can go on fuel? I think we're going to see them in here in the next 10 or 12 laps. Uh, they've gone green. They can go about 130 laps, and they had to run quite a few of these pace laps getting started, so I think they're due in here, and that's something we haven't seen in a while is green flag stops at Bristol. The 11 car of Denny Hamlin, although he qualified back in the 37th position, he started shotgun because they had an engine change. He started 43rd, so the 11 car has come from 43rd all the way up to 8th position. Mike. And that team really wasn't all that concerned this morning when I spoke with Mike Ford, Doc. They really were uh, looking at this racetrack, basically studying what they saw in the Bush race. And Mike Ford said that he saw a lot of Darlington in this new Bristol. And because of that, applied some of the principles to the race car today. And really, Denny hasn't said much. A little bit loose between one and two, but otherwise real happy. Side-by-side -side action. And Bobby Labonte just gets nudging ahead of the 42 car. That is for the sixth position. So you take a look at Denny Hamlin. He grew up in the short tracks. He's ran every bull ring in the southeast. And if he's ever going to run good at a racetrack, these short tracks at Bristol's are really right up his alley. Pit stops beginning under the green flag. They got to get down to 30 miles an hour. The 22 car of Dave Blaney. Very unique here pitting under the green at Bristol, Tennessee. At Bristol, Tennessee, you're allowed to pit on your perspective pit road. You don't have to go all around. You don't have to enter in turn two and drive all the way around. If you're pitting on the front straightaway, you can enter off of turn four. And now if you're entering, if you're pitting on the back straightaway, you can enter off of turn two. And if you are under caution, you have to come in off of turn two and come all the way around. The 70 car is slowed and cars are trying to get around him and now the caution will fly for the first time tonight. Okay, night. Johnny, come on, come on around, pit when you can. As soon as the pit's open, come on in. We'll change right sides, guys, get it back through. Johnny, Johnny Sauter's car slowing up high on the racetrack has had some contact. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We almost had one of the biggest crashes of the day. Oh, Casey yeah, Kane. It hit pretty damn hard. Steering wheels really screwed up. Take a look at Casey Kane. A big run coming off a of turn two. Wide open. Doesn't see the 70 slowed down. He tucks down to the bottom. Barely clears him. 
I'm telling you what, Andy, we almost had a big one right there. That was real close. We saw a crash in practice in the boot with the Bush cars that was similar to that, where one of the cars was spun, stopped over there, and Reed Sorensen piled right into him. We almost saw the same thing. And that's one of the problems you have with the high banking. They've carried the banking way far off the corner so these guys can drive better. This is a bad break for the 22 car, Dave Blaney. He pitted under green. Now this caution comes out. It's going to really be costly for him and Ward Burton. We saw coming down pit road right as the caution came out. Now remember the pit procedure under caution. They all have to come on the pit road off of turn two and come all the way around at 30 miles an hour. It just effectively makes it one one pit road. You see these guys coming in on the back stretch. A lot of these guys are going to be pitting on the front stretch. The NASCAR just makes this act like one big long pit road by doing it this way. Jamie. And pit